Hey guys, we are back with some more Checking Lions franchise mode. And in this one, we are going to finally get on with the season. And as we take a look at our AHL roster, I did make quite a few signings. I believe 10, at least 10 players for our forward and defensive cores over there in the AHL for the Prague Paladins. So they should end up being competitive this year at the very least. And they also have Kincaid and Lion there in net. So I, I don't see why they shouldn't at least be pushing for a playoff spot. And not to mention, they, of course, have Cal Foot there. Hopefully, he has a really good season. He has perfect chemistry everywhere there. So, if, if we can grow him, he will be, at the very least, a valuable trading asset of the future. So, that being said, I believe we are ready to start up the regular season simulation for year number one with your checking Lions. And we have our first game in franchise history against the Edmonton Oilers. We are in Edmonton, and we are going to view the entire game. Starting out with the first period here, we are on the power play. Nothing happens. Edmonton with the power play of their own now. And they, uh, no, we score. Okpozo on Koskinen. That caught me off guard there for a second because they were the ones on the power play. But we scored, it looks like, immediately after the power play ended. And Nyquist with the second goal of the game for your checking Lions. But, of course, Nuge scores with 119 remaining in the first period. And that makes it 2-1 to one heading into the second period. Shots are 10 to 11, and Nemestikov scores his first of the season on Koskinen. So, looking good so far. Power play for your Lions, but we unfortunately give up a goal to McDavid right after the power play ends. Game is 3 2. More than halfway through the second period now. We are uh, still looking good in our first game here, but I suppose anything could happen, especially against McDavid and Dreisaitl and uh, all those guys on the Edmonton Oilers that who we, you definitely have to watch out for. Heading into the third period now, if we are still at a one-goal game or tied with about five minutes left, then we should go into it. Jacob Larson with a shorthanded goal on Koskinen in our first ever game. Less than ten minutes remaining in the third. And we are now five minutes remaining. And that'll be all she wrote. We win our first game ever, 4-2 to two against the Edmonton Oilers. And the three stars of the game, Ranta, Nemestikov, and McDavid. Now our first home game ever against the Dallas Stars. We will also view this one. Here we go. First period and, oh boy, Tyler Sagan scores an early goal against Ronta. But Nyquist with his second of the season, I believe, on Ben Bishop. So we're all tied up at one. Halfway through the first period now. We are starting to catch up in shots a little bit. But more realistically, no one's really taking any shots at all. But another shorthanded goal, well, this time for Rupe Hints. So we, in two games, have two shorthanded goals. And Jamie Benn on the power play scores on Ranta. We are tied 2-2 going into the second period. Come on, boys. Get something going here. We have a power... They have a power play, actually. But Rupert Hurts with another shorthanded goal. My goodness. <laughs> Three shorthanded goals in the first two games of our franchise. That is kind of unbelievable. Marcus Johansson scores with 12-10 remaining in the second period. But we take a 4-2 lead. Into the third period. Wow. Here we go. Third period. It's going to happen here. We have Kamano with the goal on Ranta. We have a one goal game. And oh boy, we have a tie now. Blake Como on Ranta. Kreider on Ranta. Okay. Let's settle down here, boys. Settle down here. Come on. Don't want to blow our first home game. We're going to. I think we're. Uh, yeah, we're going to go into it. We're going to. Come on. Stop the simulation. Stop the simulation. What is going on? I, I tried stopping it in the first game, too, with, like, two minutes remaining so we could see our first win ever. But, man, there, there appears to be something wrong <laughs> with the user interface here at NHL 21. That is just fantastic. So, we lost 6-4. to four. I wanted to show you guys the final minute of that period, but it was just an absolute cluster like I've never seen before. So, we're just going to get ahead to our next home game against Ottawa and hope we have some better fortunes there. So, here we go. Game number three of the regular season. Let's hope for our first home win here. And, of course, Dadanov scores yet another early goal on your checking Lions. And Galchenyuk on Ranta as well. Is this going to be a bad game, a really bad game for your checking Lions? I hope not. They already have two on five shots. We get a goal by Teddy Bluger on Matt Murray. First period in the books. We have 11 shots to eight. So we have the advantage there, but not on the score sheet. Power play. Goes nowhere. Power play for Ottawa now. Halfway through the period. Nothing doing for either team just yet. 
here in this second period. Five minutes remaining. Johansson with the goal on Murray. So we are now all tied up. 24 shots to 16. And we are headed into the locker room tied at two. Third period now. Johan Larson with the goal on Matt Murray. His second of the season, I believe. 15 minutes remaining in the third period. Can we hold this lead? Can we get an insurance marker? Ottawa with the power play. Nothing doing. Come on. There you go. Devin Taves with the goal on Matt Murray. Defense pinching in on offense. Three minutes remaining. Rope Hintz gets the goal on Murray. Now Johansson. There you go. That is more like it. So we get the blowout 6-2 victory. Larson, Johansson, and Taves with the goals. Or uh, three stars of the game, I should say. Oh, also. I meant to sign Devin Aronson for our AHL team, but when I before I started this episode, I looked at his stats, and yeah, he's kind of killing it there in the U.S. League. I didn't want to touch it, so I, I think we'll just let Aronson play out the rest of the season in the U.S. League, just absolutely rip it to shreds, and hopefully he ends up being a higher overall at the end of the season, because at the moment, he is just beasting down there. So we'll let him just continue what he's doing. So after one month of simulating, we are currently 6-3-1, sitting third in the Atlantic Division. Andres Janssen leads our team with 9 points in 10 games. Uh, not bad, not bad. We'll check out the rest of the players' stats now while we're at it. Jan Crow with 9 points. Hinson Nyquist with 8. Johansson, Larson, and Taze with 7. Brown with 6. Nemestikov with 5. We're getting a lot of depth scoring here. Lievo with 5. Barry with 4. Bluger with 4. Richie with 4. Chara with three, Ocpozo with two, Donato with two, McKay with one, and then Shea with none currently. And in goal, you have Ranta with a 926, and Demko with a 937 in two games played. So overall, looking pretty solid right now. Michael Medio with 11 points, Shore with 10, Lindstrom with 10. A lot of guys getting points down here in the AHL. Mark Mathot, one of our free agent signings, has eight assists down there. In nine games as a defensive defenseman. Gonchar, one of our prospects with six points so far on the season. And Prague is currently 8-1 and one on the season so far. you love to see it. So overall, so far, no complaints. Let's check out the team stats. And then I think we can get on with the simulation. There doesn't appear to be anything to change at the moment. So currently, we are sitting at a 3.4 goals for per game. And goals against per game, we are sitting at a 2.3. Once again, not bad at all. I wish the power play was better, much better. Matter of fact, we are only at a 14.3. But then again, we haven't had many opportunities either. So not only are we not getting too many chances, we're also not scoring on those chances. So uh, yeah, the power play should probably be changed up a bit. But at least the penalty kill is not bad. We're at a 86.2, so that's actually pretty good, in my opinion. And three short-handed goals for already on the season. That, of course, came... <laughs> but all of them came in the first two games of the season, as we saw in the slow sim. But, yeah, otherwise, besides the power play, uh, we're, we're looking pretty good so far. Honestly, I think these are our best power play lines at the moment, considering we don't really have too many offensively based players. Most of our players are two-way guys or, you know, just aren't very high in overall. I, I feel like there's not really much we can do about it that would really make a difference, you know? I guess we could try Janssen on here instead of Mesnikov, but I don't think he'll make too much of a difference. Well, actually, he does have nine points on the season, so... And that's without power play time so far, so we'll see what he can do with it. But otherwise, it, I don't think it makes too much of a difference who we have on the power play this year. So what we're relying on is the 5-on-5 five five scoring and our penalty kill in our defense. And obviously, as a result, our goaltending. Which, everything besides the power play seems to be doing well so far, so... Once again, it'd be nice if the power play was doing something. But as long as that's our only flaw, I, I can't really complain. And uh, Andreas Janssen has a sore knee until November 13th. We're going to edit the lines manually here. Fortunately, we'd lose that plus three on the second line. We're going to have to find temporary replacements. We could get a Pozo there. He also creates that plus three. And then Shaw in on the fourth line. After another month of simulating, we are 14, 9, and 1. Sitting in a wild card spot currently. Very competitive with the Senators, Canadians, and Bruins. So we're not exactly locked into anything just yet. So I would love to get that power play going if it's not already. Which I would imagine it's not. Based off how bad it was before. Goals for per game. We're currently sitting at a 3.21. Goals against per game has gone up quite significantly since the last we checked. It is now at a 2.96. Power play. We're actually at... 22.6, so it, the power play is going. 
So no reason to change that, I suppose. I, I guess I just expected it to be bad since it was already pretty bad to start the season. But I guess now that we have gotten more opportunities, our percentage has gone way up there. And as far as the penalty kill goes, uh, the penalty kill took a bit of a hit for whatever reason. It's now at 814 but nonetheless, we're still seeing some success. It's just we're not being as consistent as before. So we're now 14-9-1. I don't know why I backed out of that. I want to check player stats. But nonetheless, if we could find a way, just find a way to be more consistent, then we should honestly make a strong push for the playoffs here in year number one. You have Gus Nyquist with 21 points, Johansson with 20, Hintz, Janssen, uh, and Yarncrow with 17 Domesticov with 14, 13 for Brown and Barry, 11 for Johan Larson and Taves and Richie. I'm surprised Richie doesn't have more with that plus five there on the first line. Bluger with eight, Donato with seven, Leavo with seven as well, Char with six, you have Pozo and Shea with five, McCabe with four, Shaw with one. And a goal, you have Ranta with a 905, that might be it. And then Demko with 89, yeah. So it appears goaltending took a bit of a hit there in that month. I'm not going to fret over that too much because we all know goaltending goal tending in this game can be very inconsistent. So as, as long as we don't dip too far down, I'm not too concerned, given that our, our general team stats are all right. I don't know. I think it was a pretty good idea keeping Aronson there in the U.S. League. He currently has 24 goals and 25 assists in 22 games played. Oh, my goodness. He is, <laughs> he is growing at a phenomenal rate, over two points per game. I mean, that is incredible. 109 shots. Once again, though, we're just going to leave him there because I, I, I don't want to touch whatever magic is happening there because it's clearly working out for him, and he's growing in overall because of it. So we're just going to let him be for the rest of the year. So I think we can simulate another month here, and we will see what happens in, I believe we're in December now. So after another month of simulating, we are now 22 13 and 2. So only four losses on that month. Uh, we're doing much better than I expected for sure. We're still not solidified in a playoff spot, but we're definitely gaining advantage over teams like the the Senators and the Bruins. So as long as we can stay ahead of the wild cards, which honestly I think the wild cards will end up in the Atlantic Division this year anyway, based off how things are looking currently, <laughs> especially with the Hurricanes who are currently in second in the Metropolitan, only with 42 points. And the wild, meanwhile, the wild card in the Atlantic has 46. So I think I think we'll be fine. And Gus Nyquist having a pretty good season so far. 32 points and 37 games played on that first line with Marcus Johansson. Also 32 points. 29 for Yonkro, 27 for Janssen. For Barry, he has 24. Hintz has 23. Nemestikov with 21. Just an all-around team performance here. It looks like so far this year. And in that, you have Ronta with a 907 and an 895 for Demko. So the, the goaltender numbers have been consistent since last we checked. So I'm okay with it. As for the team stats, goals for per game. We are currently sitting second in the division. 3.24 goals for per game and goals against per game. We are sitting fifth in the division with a 2.84. That's a little bit better than before, though. Power play is currently sitting at an 18.7. So the power play has kind of been all over the place this year so far. First, it was at a 15.6, I think it was, and then 22%, and now we're down to 18.7, so it's kind of back and forth. But the penalty kill looks to have stabilized. We're at an 81.7. I think it was at 81.6 last we checked. So overall, looking pretty good. A prog, unfortunately, looks to have fallen off recently. They started out the season, I believe, 8-1. Now they're 19-14-4. So we're roughly halfway through January, and uh, I'm not liking the direction this is headed whatsoever. We have one win currently on the month. <laughs> loss against Chicago, loss against Anaheim, loss against Buffalo, loss against Florida, loss against Calgary, loss against the Rangers, loss against San Jose, loss against Pittsburgh. I saw enough after, after Pittsburgh there for sure. Uh, something needs to happen. We are now out of a playoff spot, 49 points. The other wild card is now in the Metropolitan. Uh, we need to do something. I, I don't know what it is, but we need to do something. We definitely do, because that is is that losing streak is unacceptable. It really is. I mean, I know we're a new team. I know we don't necessarily have any studs on our team yet, but 
after the start to the season that we had, only to go on a run like that is kind of... I don't like it. So checking out the team stats here, we are still scoring goals, it looks like. 3.02 goals for per game, but we're also getting scored on three goals against per game. Power play, it looks like it's staying consistent now at 18.3%. And the penalty kill has actually gotten better since we last checked, 83.6. So I'm not too sure what's going on here, but yeah, as you see, the last 10, 1, 8, and 1. Uh, I have a feeling it's the goaltending. I just have a feeling <laughs> that it is the goaltending. As we take a look at the player stats, I mean, the offense has kind of dried up as well. Let's see, are we winning faceoffs? It looks like it. Yarncrow is currently at a 53.8, 52% for hints. 48.5 for Bluger and a 45.6 for Johansson. We might be able to change him around a bit. Yeah, because he's the first line center, so we might. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we are going to change that because we cannot be losing that many faceoffs on the first line. Physically, uh, we're getting a fair amount of hits. Takeaways and giveaways. Let's see if there's anyone who just has an atrocious ratio. Uh, no one that really stands out here. Yeah, Shea's not too good at the moment with the with the turnovers unfortunately same for McCabe and then Char a bit as well so mostly defensemen forward wise turnovers are all right honestly I don't have any complaints with any of our forwards for the turnovers but defense could use some work face-offs we need to improve the first line and what about our goaltending situation kind of underwhelming but not as bad as I expected honestly what to do I think once again we definitely have to change up that first line center. So let's see. Richie has a 65 for faceoffs. Johansson has a 70. Nyquist has a 65. I really do not want to lose that plus five. So if we could find another playmaker that works there on that first line, who has better faceoffs, I mean, maybe, well, Yonker is a sniper. Nah, there's no other playmaker that really works on that line, I don't think. Maybe Nemesnikov? Yeah, that's going to be tough. So I think we're going to leave it off here because we're all of a sudden not in a really good spot. So... Just let me know what we should do. I'll see you guys in the next one.